What's up everyone, Kara Corey here, registered dietitian. And today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about five of the biggest lessons I've learned since being on my fitness journey. And I just thought this would be a fun video to do because I have been on my fitness journey for an extremely long time and I've never really kind of reflected and rehashed what lessons I've learned to get to where I am right now. Now, if you guys are new here, I do have a background in bodybuilding, but even before being a WMBF bikini pro, I was a marathon runner and I ran over 10 marathons, qualified for Boston, even ran the Boston Marathon. So um, prior to that, I got into fitness at a very young age in high school, just was interested in working out in the gym. Like I became a gym rat at the age of 15 years old, joined a gym and just kind of fell in love with fitness ever since. So I've always felt very fortunate that I have a love for fitness naturally because I do know a lot of people just hate working out and I'm not that person. I genuinely enjoy it. So yeah, as I sit here today, I thought, what have I learned throughout this process that I can share with you guys in hopes of a couple things? Number one, maybe something here that I've learned from you guys will take and learn from it as well if you've made some of the mistakes or trial and errors that I've gone through. And number two, it's always good to reflect and give yourself credit for where you are now and where you started from. Because oftentimes we sit there and we wanna pick ourselves apart for where we are not there yet. You know, like what we aren't at this moment is what we like to dwell upon and focus our energy towards when in actuality, you should focus your energy on all the things that you've done that are great and positive and put less emphasis on the negativity or the things that you think aren't where they should be. So I did kind of like go outside, sat in the sunshine and reflected on what I thought my five lessons are, but I didn't want to like, you guys know I don't do this scripted so things can get rambly, but I wanted to kind of narrow it down, so I do have some notes with me just to keep my five bullet points concise. These are gonna be in no particular order, honestly, because they're just not. There isn't any one thing that stands out to me above others, and there's probably more lessons I've learned here than what I'm gonna share with you guys today. So if you do like this video, don't forget to thumbs it up. Also, make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you are not already. You can go ahead, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you guys do know each and every time that I upload. Do a lot of fun things on this community, in this channel, a lot of nutrition tips, fitness tips, my life, my dog. I think it's all pretty cool, actually. <laughs> so lesson number one, and I think this is one of the first things that I really learned is that more is not better when it comes to fitness. Like for the longest time, I thought more, more, more is what gets you the results. It's what gets you to where you need to be. And I'm speaking more in terms of the workouts themselves. So previously I thought doing more was always best. Like that was gonna get me my dream body, was just doing more. And it was typically cardio. I had the marathon background, so I really did mostly cardio-based workouts. I did what I thought at the time was a little bit of lifting where I did like four machines after I ran. But for me, I approached every day in the gym as run as far as you can. Um, and if it's not at least four to six miles, then it's not enough and you failed your day. If you can do more cardio than just your run, that's even better. You're, you know, it was all about cardio and doing more, more, more and running myself into the ground. It wasn't until I really learned about proper weightlifting and really learned more about my body and how my body finally started responding to have the body I have now, um, which is the body I desired for so long in my 20s. Um, it was to just work smarter and not harder, you know? Like it's, it's a saying we hear all the time, but it's so true. And think about that with your own workouts. Are you working smarter or are you working harder? Because for the longest time I was working harder. And I think back to, you know, when Jason and I got married, because I didn't really start bodybuilding till after we got married, um, or weightlifting, I should say, but 
I would do three to four classes a day. I was really into group workouts, and so I would do a Zumba class, I would do a Turbo Kick class, and I'd do a Stepper class, like three in a row. I'm not trying to trigger anyone here, but it was excessive. That's three straight hours of cardio. I would be at the YMCA from 4.30 to nearly 8 p.m. at night and would require a sugar-free Red Bull to do so. That isn't healthy, that isn't smart, it actually puts more stress on your body than it does good, and I just looked, I mean, I'm not hating on my body, I'm not having any um, negative self-talk here about myself, but it definitely wasn't making me look fit. I was just looking thin. Um, and it was just running myself into the ground. I was just burning myself out. And you can do that for a long period of time, some people more than others, but at some point, your body is going to rebel against that. And you're probably not gonna get the results you want probably gonna run down your immune system. I used to get sick all the time. Like, honestly, I didn't feel good a lot of the times. And it was probably because I wasn't eating enough and I was overexerting myself in the gym. And so for me to make that switch from finally realizing, you know, just doing more, more, more is not the answer. You know, figuring out a way to fine tune how much cardio I really needed to do to feel fit, to feel healthy, to see results, in addition to weightlifting, which really helped shape the body that I wanted. You know, it was really letting go of the cardio and doing less of it and focusing more on building some strong, healthy muscles. So that was a huge one for me. So really think about your workouts. Are, are you working harder or smarter? What are you guys doing? So I know for me personally, the older I get, the more I think about the future and the long-term goals. I don't just think about like, oh, I want a beach body in two weeks. So what do I have to do? I think about my overall health and really the longevity of my health and my fitness career. Like I want to be that person at 80 years old walking into the gym still lifting weights. You know, I don't want to be someone at 50 years old where it hurts to get up every day. So again, to me, that just goes back to what do I have to do to be smart right now with my physical fitness to make sure I have a long a long fitness journey ahead of me. All right, number two, I guess kind of goes along with number one, not necessarily, but for me, it was learning to eat and train for my goals. Um, for the longest time when I was doing more cardio, as I just spoke about, more endurance style training, um, I wasn't eating enough. And my mindset, I mean, I was eating enough to maintain a healthy weight. I was fine, you guys, but my mindset was the less you eat, the better. The less you eat, the skinnier, the skinnier you will be. And that is the goal, is eat less, be skinny as possible. And my mindset is so the opposite now. I'm like, uh, how do I eat as much as possible, as much as possible to fuel my body, to maintain where I'm at, to make gains in the gym. And it's just such a different approach for me. Like, it's crazy. Um, I, for the longest time, just didn't eat a lot. I didn't eat a lot and I was a vegetarian and this is nothing against vegetarianism because I totally support it. I think it's great. I was vegetarian for like 12 years or something like that. I forget now. I was vegetarian from the age of like 15 to 25, 20, no, 26. Cause I was vegetarian on our honeymoon. Um, but I wasn't a good vegetarian. I wasn't properly getting in all the micronutrients that my body needed. I was severely anemic. Um, I was not good about getting in good sources of protein. I would eat a box of cereal for dinner um, or a box of granola bars. Like That's just how I ate. So I wasn't fueling my body properly to actually see changes that I wanted. And I always hated that as a marathon runner, you know, to feel, you know, to say I'm a marathon runner, I feel is such a powerful statement. And it's obviously something I'm still very proud about. But at the time, I always felt like I don't look like an athlete. And, and beyond the looks, I didn't feel like an athlete. I didn't feel strong. I didn't feel like I had good energy. I felt sluggish and run down. And every time I stood up, I was dizzy which was likely related to being severely anemic because that's something I, I knew since I was a young girl. Um, so I, you know, it, it was a long journey for me shifting the way I ate, but, and for me personally, again, 
this is nothing against vegans or vegetarians for me personally shifting my diet getting meat back into my diet number one was a huge benefit to me in terms of my energy levels because i was a shitty vegetarian i just was not good i can't imagine what my b12 levels were and all that kind of stuff because I just didn't do a good job. I wasn't a vegetarian that ate a bunch of dark leafy greens and made sure I got in, you know, ample sources of iron rich foods. I just didn't do that. I was a lazy vegetarian. So when I finally got meat back in my diet, that was huge, number one. Number two, the, and this took longer for me, but it was learning how to eat more and be okay with eating more. And because you guys know, or, you know, I have that history with bodybuilding. So throughout my journey, I've had these periods of times where I have been in a major caloric deficit an effort to get stage ready. So these in-between times between competing on stage and kind of transitioning back into how do I eat for goals beyond the stage took a while. I would say the past three years, I've been in the best place I ever have, you know, but it took me pretty much up until three years ago to get where I am now with being able to balance, making sure I'm getting in good nutrition, not skipping meals because I think it's going to make me look thinner. I'm on top of like eating and making sure I get enough food throughout the day and trying to make sure I get enough balance of the nutrients I'm getting in my diet because at the end of the day, what matters to me the most over how I look, how that scale reads is how I feel. And that, for me, I always can relate it back to my nutrition choices. And I've never felt better than I have the past few years with making sure I'm eating enough food, you know, and making sure I'm not overworking my body. So that's really been huge for me. So based on you and your goals, you really have to look at what you're eating. And are you someone who's saying you want to make gains and, you know, increase your delts, but you're constantly in a caloric deficit? You kind of have to look at what you're doing and is it adding up? Is that equation adding up? Is what you're putting in going to equate to the results you hope to get? And no, it's not always an easy transition with shifting your mind from being more of a restrictive eater to eating enough and being okay with gaining weight, being okay with gaining the extra body fat, being okay with seeing the scale go up. Um, but you really have to think about what your goals are and what's worth it to you at the end of the day. And I can say that now more than ever, my relationship with food, with my body is the best it's been. Number three for me, was a learning that in this equation of fitness, it's more than just the food and the fitness. It's not just calories and calories out. And I'm not just talking about weight loss. I'm talking about how you feel as a person on a day-to-day -day basis. So my third lesson was truly learning more about my own body, my internal health in terms of stress and how stress uh, really dictates how I'm feeling, how things are progressing in terms of my fitness goals, as well as sleep and recovery. So those are, are three huge things that often folks forget about and just leave out of the equation when they're starting their fitness journey. You know, and it really hit me the most, I wanna say one prep I was doing one summer, I was entering, uh, I was gonna do a national show and I just made a huge job change. I had went from being a dietitian to running the department and my boss at the time, who was like my main mentor left. So I was just like learning this job on my own at a very young age, I feel like. Um, my stress was through the roof, you guys. And I was doing everything 100%. I was eating my meals. I was training hard each and every session. I was killing myself. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter because I was so beyond stressed. I wasn't sleeping well. And it showed in my body. Like I just, I, I couldn't lose the same amount of weight I needed to to be stage ready. At that time, I was just like, if I'm doing everything I need to do, I should be getting the results. It should be that easy. And it's just not, you guys. So don't forget to lose, like don't forget to pay attention to those other factors in your life that influence you, that influence your, your body and your health and your ability to make progress with your fitness goals. So stress is huge. And for some people, you need to forget about all the rest and just first focus on stress management and first focus on getting your sleep into a consistent pattern. 
So those are really huge things that you need to not ignore, regardless of how old you are, they impact you. And at some point, you know, I hear people who are like, no, you grind, you just grind it. You keep grinding, you get up, I don't care what time you went to bed, you get up at that same time every day, you get your workout done, you kill it. It doesn't matter if you have four hours of sleep. I disagree, I disagree. I think you can do that for a period of time. You can just keep on that, that method, but at some point it's going to catch up with you. And you may suffer the consequences of things you can't reverse internally because of that chronic stress you've caused your body. So I caution you with that and I hope you guys learn from me because I spent years not really caring about how much I slept. I mean, I think that's typical when you're in college and things like that. You're constantly having work to do, but you know, at some point you have to put that as a priority first. There it is. I've like, I keep licking my lip because I got hair on my lip. I think I finally got it. Good. Okay, tip number four, and I've alluded to this a little bit, and some of these kind of work together, but it really became, or tip number four, lesson number four for me was learning to shift my mindset and really practice more self-love. And obviously this goes beyond a fitness journey when you're talking about appreciating yourself and valuing yourself, but um, keeping it in the context of fitness, for me, I struggled for a long time with just always focusing on what I didn't like about my body and, and what I didn't like, and this was too big, and this doesn't look good and what have you. Like I just, I always focused on bad things. I never looked at myself and would have one good thing to say. And that just makes me so sad to think that I spent so long doing that internally. I, I, I was that person that if someone complimented me, I couldn't take a compliment. And don't get me wrong, we still all have days like that where we joke or whatever, but truly, what kind of vibe does that give off? It's kind of gross. Like just ex accept a compliment if someone gives you one. And I was just never able to do that because I just never believed anyone because I felt so negatively about my own body. That's really bad. It feels really bad to say that out loud, but I'm being transparent with you guys because if, especially if someone younger or even older, it doesn't matter if you're watching this, like it's never too late to really start to value yourself, especially beyond your body. But for me, I, I don't know that there was one thing I did that helped me move on from that. I just know that I actively worked on challenging myself of shifting the negative thoughts to more positive ones and really focusing on appreciating myself. And, you know, the older you get, the more you start to see how fortunate you are in life. And, you know, there's way more important things than how your body looks. And I you know, I have goals still like, sure, I'd love for things to be leaner or this to be tighter or that to be bigger. And that's cool. And I'm going to actively work towards that. But at the same time, I don't have, I don't have to hate myself today for that. You know, like I can still wake up, wear a sports bra and teeny tiny shorts and feel really good about my body. And the fact that I'm standing here doing this video like this, you know, is something I would have never done, um, when I first started this channel, if I wasn't competition lean. And I'm just not that person anymore. I, I've grown to really love myself and adore my body and be proud of it and not sit there and pick it apart every day. And again, I think it gets confusing with the self-love message like you're not allowed to work towards goals. That means you don't love yourself and accept your body. And I disagree with that totally. I, I think you can absolutely love your body and still have active goals. Like I, I that's just my approach and that's just me, but I would say for me, that was a huge lesson I had to learn because when you just stay in that constant state of negativity, it doesn't matter how much weight you lose. It doesn't matter if you reach what you think your goals are, you're still gonna be unhappy, you're still gonna be negative towards yourself and, and nothing will make you happy. So you really have to kind of tease out what's going on there? Is there something else in your life making you happy and you're focusing that negativity inwards on your body or, you know, what is going on there? But, and some people may say, well, it's easy for you to say you have a great body. You can wake up every day and do that. And, and I get what you're saying there, but 
for any of us, you have to appreciate that you're here, that you're alive, that you're breathing, that you're able to stand on your two feet every day because not everyone can say that. And just breaking it down in that simplicity and being more more grateful and having more gratitude towards those simple things made just made it easier for me to appreciate myself. So um, I hope that is somehow helpful for you guys because that's been a big lesson for me that's really healed me in a lot of ways in terms of my insecurities and just held me back so long in so many ways that I feel like being able to love myself now fully has helped me be able to finally continue to grow more as a person. My last lesson is probably a little less deep than the last couple, but ultimately my biggest lesson was to do what makes you happy. And I think with the influence of social media, and I keep going back to competing, but it's just, it's an easy correlation for me. I remember um, like when Instagram first started, it was like 2011, 2012, that's when I was competing and a lot of, it wasn't as popular then to compete. Um, And I just remember thinking, like trying to figure out if I was going to compete again or not, or am I going to do a show this season or take time off? And instead of just really thinking about what was best for me and my lifestyle, I always kind of look to what was popular at the time. Like, well, if I don't compete, it's so trendy right now. I really should be like, that's what people like to watch on YouTube, on social media. Um, I just let those outside influences kind of, I wouldn't say I let them fully influence me, but I oftentimes would look there as a means of deciding what I should be doing right now. And I encourage you not to like, don't worry about what people are doing on social media. I get so many people that come to me that want help with their weight loss journey. And I get the sense that people feel like they have to compete. Like just because you lose a a good amount of weight and you get to the body you've always dreamed of, doesn't mean you have to compete, you guys. Like it's cool. And I don't need a justification or an explanation for that. Like it takes a lot more than just having a good body to compete. You have to have a burning desire to want to get on that stage because it is so much work. So don't let those outside influences dictate what you do on your fitness journey. And another thing that I think about when I give you guys that lesson is, you know, be true to what what you want and what makes you happy. So if you really want to lose weight, if you really want to feel better about yourself and make better eating choices, but you're in a group of people that don't support that and continue to encourage you to like, do things that don't align with your goals, you have to be okay with standing up for what you want because no one else is going to. So you have to be okay to speak up and say like, no, I'm going to pass on the pizza today or I'm going to pass on going out for beers after work. And if people give you a hard time, you have to be okay with with sharing your reason why. Like there's, there's a way of going about it. Um, I think to just be like, nah, you know, I'm not really feeling up for it. I'm really trying to you know, to, to, to feel healthier or something, you know, like, and I know it's a hard conversation because other people can be sensitive to it and feel like you're judging them. But at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you. You have to quit worrying about how everyone else is interpreting things and do what's best for you. So if you're someone that, um, you know, wants to do Zumba because you love Zumba, but it's not popular, who cares? Do what you enjoy doing and don't let other people influence you because as you guys know, everyone is a fitness expert. Everyone's a trainer. Everyone's a nutritionist. Everyone's got a cheesecake in the oven. Ultimately, you won't be able to sustain a fitness routine or goal if it's not something you genuinely enjoy doing anyways. So try to block out the noise from other people around you. Try to just focus on what you enjoy, what you like doing, and just stay in your own lane. Don't worry about what other people are doing because it's not a one-fits-all approach. There's There's different things that work for all of us. It isn't just one magic wand. And so it's truly about finding what you enjoy doing. So just try to do you and and quit worrying about if other people are doing it too. And focus on what you like to do, what makes you happy, and something you can sustain. All right, guys, that's going to end my video on the five biggest lessons I've learned along my fitness journey. I hope you guys found it helpful. 
I know I disclosed a lot of personal information, but you know, it's really been amazing to me to see how far I've come. And I hope that it helps you guys who maybe are struggling a bit. You know, this, this journey of fitness, it's a continuum that's ongoing. And sometimes there's peaks and sometimes there's lows. So, um, you know, sometimes you can feel like you're taking two steps forward and then three steps back. Like it's ongoing for all of us. So it's always good to just you know, think about the things that you've done well and keep working towards it. Not every day is going to be perfect, but uh, it's nice to look back and think about how much I've grown and learned along the way. And I hope you guys have learned something and probably maybe seen my growth as well since I've been on YouTube for a while now. But um, I'd love it if you guys would share below one thing that you've learned on your fitness journey, like one big lesson you've learned. I'm sure there's so much more that I could come up with that I didn't share in this video, but comment below what you guys have learned on your fitness journeys, or if you feel like you haven't learned anything and you're a noob, what you hope to learn starting out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.